Welcome back to our show this morning. As promised, we're joined by Shakira Young, the mother of Tyler Savory. And we're also joined by a well-known painter, Alex Sanker. And this morning's conversation at this particular moment will be to talk about the peace initiative in the wake of the unfortunate death uh, of seven-year-old Tyler. Dickie? Well, Shakira, morning, and thanks mm -hmm. for stopping by. I imagine that by now you feel the full glare of the public that is bearing down on you, even in your time of sorrow. You have become a new light for us. Isani and I were speaking yesterday. I was, we were saying that what the teachers have done to take the country to at least another level in our thought, mm -hmm. that these people who are non-political, nobody now get on Facebook to say anything degrading about the politicians, which they deserve if they had said so. Nobody distract from the issue that the teachers have done. And in fact, we want to also congratulate the teachers and their attorney, Eamon Courtney, for that big victory yesterday where the Chief Justice said that they are not to touch their pay until the case is finalized. So they'll have a good Christmas. They should get a bonus. But in your case, I was just thinking this morning that for the last 10 years, there have been at least over a thousand murders in the city. It's unheard of. In the Battle of St. George's Key, not one person died. I think one drunken American sailor fell down in his boat and he sprained one of his fingers. That's the only casualty in the Battle of St. George's Key. But over a thousand people have been murdered in this country and we're taking it for granted. And many mothers have cried on television, cried on the news. There were the mothers for justice, there were mothers against violence. And then suddenly, out of this unbelievable news that broke one evening that there had been a shooting on Daly Street and a child was involved. And then minutes afterwards, some of the texts I got is the child had passed away and the, other, the adult was not in good condition. And then there emerged Shakira Young, not calling for vengeance, not saying the things people who are hurt would normally say but taking it to another level. So first of all, against that background, thanks for coming by, and our condolences are with you, and we ask the Almighty to make you strong, because right now you're being caught up in a new situation, but the hurt will be there long after the television cameras are gone. So first of all, my understanding is that this was your only child. Yes, sir. Uh, he was. You are from Belize City? Yes, sir. You're a Belize City girl, so you have mingled with the hurt and the pain that is taking place around us. You live on the north side or the south side? I live on the north side of Belize City. Okay. Well, the funeral has passed. There has been a vigil. And just now we were treated very quickly to a brief rundown of two paintings done by one of our top artists, which we'll get to, but tell us a little bit about what would have caused you to go in the direction that there ought to be a peace initiative, there ought to be some, something other than just a funeral. I think, Mr. Bradley, um, this basically emerged from the type of child my son was. Um, I can't even start to explain how much life he brought to my life. Like, he was my everything, and he still is, because even though he's gone in flesh, I could still feel that my son is sitting in the back seat of the car while I'm driving, and I look at his little cars and his stuff that he likes, and I know that he will never be able to play with them again, but still I keep that essence around to remind me that I once had something were loving and meaning to me. Um, at this point, I do have my highs, I do have my lows, like any grieving mother. But what I've dedicated myself to say and to do is to ensure that I carry on my son's name 
um, I want Tyler Nim to go down in precedence that this will not happen to another child. And if it happens to another child, then it, we, it will be handled a certain way because I seriously don't believe that our children should now be targeted um, as targets, basically. My son simply was going for his milkshake that Friday and his cousin was taking him and based from what I know and what I am seeing or I'm, and I'm getting from the police, this isn't something that my son was even a target, neither was his cousin. Mm -hmm. So for those who are saying that it was his cousin who was the target and um, it was something where he used my baby as a shield, that isn't the case. Um, this is something where I know now, after prayers, after sitting and just being silent, just crying and asking questions, I know that this is because God has something bigger in store for me that I could even imagine. I sit, I cry, I get back up. But whenever I look at my little boy's picture, I say, Taylor, this will not go in vain. And I want to keep my face on that TV so that person could see my face and he could know that he took away my life. He took my life from me when he took my son. A suspect has been arrested? Yes, sir. And I charged, heard. and charged. Yes, for, so it's a double murder? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me something. I am most moved by the fact that you have a very strong resolve in the face of everything that has happened over the past week or so. You have maintained your composure, at least in the public's eye. And I think that allows us to be strong for you as well. Uh, if I can put on my hat as a journalist here, I covered the initial story in terms of the incident itself. My colleague um, did the follow-up interview with you. I believe it was on the Monday. And when I sat and I looked at the interview that you gave, and how powerful and resounding that was for someone who, by any stretch of the imagination, would be completely grief-stricken otherwise. Because I, I, I've been around enough parents that when they've lost someone they love, it's difficult for them to you know, formulate a, a clear thought, to be able to express that, given the circumstance. And I was amazed when I saw your, your interview, and I was like, there's something there, I, I would want to say it's spiritual. There is something in you that I believe that that sense of resolve is just there. You have been around the Hamiltons. I know the Hamiltons were um, a key feature in the vigil on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. How have you been able to pass on or translate that inner strength that you have to other grieving mothers? In this case, it would be the Hamilton family. Well. The thing is, my encounter with, with her was b very brief. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to do is maybe have a one-on-one -on -one with her to sit down. Because when, when I visited her, it wasn't necessarily an atmosphere that we could have an open discussion and, um, as such. But um, her grieving, my grieving, um, I wouldn't definitely say that it's the same because each person is different and everybody handles it differently. Don't mind that when I'm at home I, and I'm in the silence of my room and I see my little boy's stuff there, it bothers me. Um, yesterday I, re I returned to work and I sat at my desk just gazing because I looked down at my calendar and there I had Tyler's school number, there I had his teacher's phone number. I had everything mapped out for my little boy. and. I just sat there and I started to cry and I scratched my calendar and I scratched out the numbers and I, I was angry because I said, I don't need this information anymore. I don't need it anymore. But when I find myself falling down and getting angry, what I do is I just wipe my tears and I talk to my baby and I talk to God and I tell them, you know my plans, you know what you have in store for me and I am here. I am. I'm open, I can't do anything else. I mean, I lost his dad two years ago. Um, that was a grieving process for me. That took some time. Gone violent? Yes. He was also shot innocently in What's the street. What's his name? Leon Savory. Okay. And now, 
two years down the road. We had just celebrated two years, um, October 27th for him. Mm -hmm. And I could still recall my son asking me things about his daddy, asking me when will he ever see his dad alive again. And this for me throughout the past two years has been a struggle because he needs to have his dad there. Mm -hmm. But I am the one now to ensure that I do what I'm supposed to do for him. Mm -hmm. But it's hard as is, but I tried my best. I tried my utmost best for my baby mm -hmm. to ensure that he was happy and he had everything that he needed. You have brothers and sisters? Yes, sir, I do. Your parents are alive? I, yes, sir. Okay. You belong to what religion? Well, I am going to um, Queen Street Baptist Church. Okay. That is the church that I attend Baptist. now. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. In terms of, there are people who need and there are people who are waiting to see if any kind of, some kind of support group, some kind of, I won't go as far as to say some kind of burning scare, but certainly somebody who could offer them uh, a help and an outlet and to be a part of something and uh, when you appeared on the television and started talking, a lot of people are thinking you can, you have the inner strength to be able to provide some support, some kind of leadership to those who need it. Because you're a very young person, your first child, mm -hmm. hopefully you'll be one of those strong mothers that give birth to many boys and girls and help to build a nation in that way because if you have that kind of genes we need more other genes in a society that is cracking and crumbling around us but you kind of see yourself making yourself available being part of a group of hopefully women because the men in Belize they really they let down I don't think it's just um, the women because I've had calls and messages from males saying that they definitely would need that support and they are behind me. So it's not just the males because we do have a um, single parent family w who is basically Men? the dad taking care of the children. So okay, but that is a rare situation. The men them in Belize and our pressure where we now understand. You know they come forward. If they were coming forward, this business that is random shooting, people are shooting a schoolyard when kids are when there, shoot the basketball court. They are shooting a church and all if the church there and when they want to shoot. These are people who, I don't know, Isani is a journalist, we don't see no profile. Who are yeah. these people in our society? Who are our children? But our they are the ones, they are the ones that we are raising. They are the ones that we are essentially have become, well, we have should be raising. become responsible. These are children, I don't think that um, they were raised. These children, these children they basically dragged themselves up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. these, these people weren't raised because if they were raised, then they would have had some sense of sympathy and compassion when mm -hmm. doing things. They would think before. Um, in my son's case, I definitely, um, based on what the, the post-mortem um, results was mm -hmm. I I now know that my son was shot from the back area so the bullet he was on the front of the bicycle yes he and was shielded from the back by the rider yes mm -hmm. so, so there's a possibility the shooter did not know I, there exactly was a shot. and that is why um, I, I definitely I keep that in mind as well and I try that's why I try to have a forgiving heart because mm -hmm. I'm saying we all are humans and we do make mistakes and for whatever reason that day that troubled soul was in the streets doing what he was doing um unfortunately it had to be my child unfortunately it had to be portion but i stick to my story that my god has something else bigger in store for me mm -hmm. and based on what the um, investigations reveal yeah. i know now that he has something big in store for me I, if I if I could interject briefly, and I, and I hate to opine for whatever reason, I'm always stuck in this journalistic mentality where people don't care to hear my opinion. But this is a different forum. If I could interject, 
I don't know that there is any mistake in the commission of murder. You, I understand exactly what you're saying. I am with you 100%. And I do believe in forgiveness. I think that is, that is foremost. But when you set your mind to take another life, regardless if it is the life you intended to take or not, I don't know that there is a mistake in doing so. You've already premeditated what the outcome of your action would be. Right? And that's just my humble... No, I, I understand. And trust me, I've had instances where I got upset and I said that they meant to kill my child. They saw my baby on that bike. I mean, I am the mother. So you could mm -hmm. imagine all the thoughts that ran through my head. Mm -hmm. I scream out crying, asking why my baby, why my son. Mm -hmm. And You don't want revenge? No. You don't want... Revenge is not for me. You want somebody to be no. punished for what happened? Well, he will, puni he will be punished. Just that I'm not the... Um, Punisher? No, I'm not. We have a God for that, and that's why I keep saying that I will remain silent and I will remain still, mm -hmm. that he knows what he's doing and he will bring justice. There was more than one person in that car, and if you notice, they have one young man held mm -hmm. and um, incarcerated for that. But the others that are out there... I just hope that they could go to sleep at night knowing that they are a child killer mm -hmm. and they took my son away from me. My son was such a bright little boy. Look at that smile. Mm -hmm. Bright little boy and he was an excellent reader. My son was an excellent reader. I had just finished picking up his midterm report um, and the lowest grade he got was a 95 wow. and that was on Spanish. Yeah. 99 for maths. English and other stuff like that and they took everything away from me but still I'm not angry mm -hmm. because I am here that that's the fact I am here mm -hmm. and my son wouldn't want me to be angry my son would want me to try to make a difference so you've, you? you've returned to work and already yes, picking today. up the pieces yes it was very painful under but the circumstance. Yes. All right, is there, a, is there a possibility that some kind of movement will come out of this horrible experience? Um, definitely. I have been doing some thinking and um, I have a few things that I would like to see set in place. But um, it's all time mm -hmm. and ensuring that I get the um, correct vocative for it mm -hmm. um, that you would see because these are things that maybe I could just throw out there, but if I don't have a plan in place and I don't have the right support, it's not something that will work in this country. Mm -hmm. Because along the way, I know I will step on people's toes. Mm -hmm. I know I will, ha I will step on people's toes. I know that at some point, somebody will try to make it political what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say that I am maybe um, anti-UDP or anti-PUP, at some point I will step on people's toes and that is why I need to have somebody that I could trust that would be able to advise me how to go about doing what I need to do. So it's just for me to collect my little thoughts, collect my information and then try to move on from there. You have a, you have a sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying, while, while that is indeed a, a noble idea to begin with, I think the people you surround yourself with as well would be critical to the outcome of this particular objective simply because other people have their own ulterior motive you find that a lot of times when you think that people are being genuine and when they attach themselves to a situation it's because they have their own personal agenda that they're trying to fulfill through your movement and i think We've all seen that with all these other organizations that have popped up out of nowhere in an event of tragedy. Uh, Shakira, what I would want to do right now is I would want to take just some time to uh, formally introduce Alex Sanker. He's also our guest this morning. And he brought along two very moving paintings that he has done. I believe one is in the immediate wake of this tragedy and the other one may have taken more time or that may have been prior to right, um, but i'll have you speak on that you don't really want to lose focus this was the only painting i am bringing but what i find out mm -hmm. yesterday is that the little girl that i used for that model okay she's like this little boy two five in school they eat mm -hmm. together go to the cmb i just find this out yesterday evening mm -hmm. but i don't want to lose focus on why i did this painting um i did this for so long mr dickie bradley just asked me how long it takes 
pieces like this, you cannot put time on it. You cannot put price on it. Mm -hmm. um, this painting, at the end of the day, when I saw her, I'm, I'm a Christian also, mm -hmm. but I don't rub it in people's face, but I'm a strong believer that in this world, everything happened for a reason. We don't might understand today. I lose one of my older brother with gun violence, was robbed and killed in um, Corozal. He was, used to be a pesero, etc. Mm -hmm. But the focus is on time right now. At the end of the day, I do what I do best, and she said best. Everything is so political in this country, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I had reached a stage in my life where I know for having got no farmer training, or any classes on this art mm -hmm. and to be like top artist in this country or one of the top artists i have always struggled to try put out pieces that make difference in this world regardless of mm -hmm. what people think i'm not in the business of pleasing people mm -hmm. i'm in the business of telling the truth and at the end of the day um i got to explain this painting because the only person i know she the reason why i did this painting is uh, first of all i wanted you to notice killing the street there's two gun shell Mm -hmm. for his son and his cousin the double line mean that at the end of the day across the double line you still had a cracks in the street as a country and as a people we are broken we have lost our way and you know as a driver before being hit in the highway any part of the world a double line you do not cross a single mm -hmm. line you could overtake a double line did not pass i put a double line because we had passed we had went over where we shouldn't have went mm -hmm. crime going to be in any society but when kids are involved it's a whole different story that, that little boy was smart like she said but when i saw her on the news something hit me and because of the pieces that i'm doing right now i know for a fact i have people have been in this business for four years mm -hmm. and they ask me like where, like where you get these concepts from because they are so my painting tell my story without saying one word but the reason why i'm describing this is but like i said at the end of the day I call this painting um, Milkshake or Life. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the title of this painting. Why? This little innocent kid went out to get a milkshake. He ended up getting none. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair, right? At the end of the day, I can't help by being in motion due to the fact that like, stuff that happened in this country where if I could do something about it, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. If I'm going to be ridiculed or like people say careful, you know, might be able to mm -hmm. put on your light. Right now, if I don't make one dollar from painting, it don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. I think I was here for a bigger purpose. And by meeting her, when I heard she said that she forgave that guy that did it, and revenge is for God, the only person I know in a history where said that was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Revenge is not for you. Revenge is for God. And at mm -hmm. the end, I did like she said, there's nothing she could do for bring back in son. Mm -hmm. If she could say a word or spread one amount of, percentage of hate in this country and his son will appear back tomorrow mm -hmm. in a back seat mm -hmm. then people but like she said she can't control that and i have learned with my older brother the same thing it's like you cannot do nothing for bring back that person um when i call she in my studio to tell her i call her other half first and tell mm -hmm. him that i did this painting but that one deep painting the first person i showed this to my best friend and she watched it and she cried she be like, Alex, I'm a sad painting. It I tell her exactly. It's a sad painting, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And what we do, for some reason, society choose to stray away from reality. I live in for 18 years. I don't want to talk about the rest of the world. I want to talk about my country. I don't want to talk about where they go on here. It's not political. You understand? At the end of the day. So now you have, make a point out first, if you notice the board, with the two bolt, mm -hmm. that was the way basically God sent the only son was sacrifice. I'm looking at it, a cross. It is a cross. Here okay. it is. So you have the double line. Yeah. But when I blow your mind, is this dove? When to get something realistically, I would have download pictures. Okay, so I download five pictures with one dove because dove that want they form peace and tranquility. So Security. I wanted to put a dove. So I mean, I put on dove like the flying the cow and pitch by wrong the cup. Because if you notice the cup say milkshake in loving memory of Tyler Savory, mm -hmm. the year when he was born and the year that he passed away. I had previously mm -hmm. got all information from her other half, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you notice the dove, 
I choose to put this down up here and I don't be, I don't believe in coincidence in a piece like this. Because mm -hmm. if you really notice, back in the days, regardless what color Jesus kid was, because of religion, with the debate if he meant white, if he meant brown, if he meant black, etc. But back in the days, they used to wear their hair long. Mm -hmm. If you notice, that's the image of God, right? Of Jesus mm -hmm. right there. The face, if mm -hmm. you know that one head with the hair and everything. Mm -hmm. The board, like I say, at the end of the day, I, I, I put the wooden board because it happened before by one bridge mm -hmm. and the bolt signify that whatever right mm -hmm. and then of course our country is at war with herself mm -hmm. and we're sad about it that's why this painting connect let me point out it's reality but this painting it's the present mm -hmm. and this is the future and none of them look good mm -hmm. but it's reality until we wake up as a society and deal with stuff that's on hand Regardless, people don't realize the smallest way you work in your community or society, like she said earlier, it takes a village. I, I had a village boy, I had a San Antonio village, Corozal district. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm in the up there last week and I'm in the paint and I just gone to Corozal, be a foot gone by tacos. And my lady said, You are right and stuff. I said, I, I think you asked me if I right because you see me be a foot by tacos. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So, society in a whole depict how you're supposed to dress, how you're supposed mm -hmm. to look, whatever. But I depend on different mission. I do Alexanka, that's it, and God. Mm -hmm. Who else have a problem with my work or whatever? I can't please everybody. So, like we are saying at the end of the day, and what blow my mind, Mr. Bradley, is that when she comes to my studio, I mean, don't do the stars there and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. I tell she the only thing we left after that we put, she said, no, left it like that blank. Mm -hmm. Because that's his son life and mm -hmm. she's in a dark place right now. Mm -hmm. You understand? The milkshake. I went to the location to buy a milkshake and I saw the little memorial thing with the flowers and stuff at the spot that they mm -hmm. took away his son life. Just as you're going over the little bit. Yes. So what I, I went and I had a shake. So when I went there, when I saw her news, she had said his son went for a milkshake. I'm not too familiar with milkshake. Mm -hmm. um, so I got in there and I asked them for a milkshake. They said, what flavor? I said, no, just one milkshake. Mm -hmm. They said, no, we're a different flavor. They start naming off a lot of different flavor like strawberry and, and whatever. So I said, you know what, just give me a strawberry. But when they gave me the strawberry shake and I bought it because I mean, want the actual cup mm -hmm. and I want the shake. If you actually drop it and mm -hmm. get that effect of the spill because although mm -hmm. he didn't get his shake, that was his mission. Mm -hmm. That's why he was there to get his shake. So in the event of him getting shot and killed, that, that basically they tell you like, mm -hmm. realistically this is what happened. And then she tell me we're crazy about this whole painting. This was his favorite shake. And we're crazy about it. I'll do it and give me one strawberry. Mm -hmm. I still choose to paint one cherry. And she say, every time I leave, I get that, that shake, the first thing in the beginning, that for that cherry. Yeah. So what I'm saying, this is not coincidence. This whole thing, and also like, and the, the thing that look like the flag, what is, what is that representing? Well, the flag just to represent at the end of the day, right? It's uh, like I tell you that one the, cross. The, yeah. um, I don't care which religion you are, we did know, or you have to believe in some kind of God. But what we as Christians was brought up is that Jesus sacrificed in life, God sacrificed mm -hmm. in son for humanity, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, by, this is the nation. And like I say, at the end of the day, we at war with ourselves. And by showing the blood and everything at the end of the day, like I say, um, this is my country. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if we choose, choose to sweep everything on the rug, then we now have no progress, you understand? And the same thing like that, that painting right there, they, by that little girl telling me that they used to be 2-5, everything makes sense now because these are two of the most recent painting, but mm -hmm. the most, I mean, Oceana put that, on the website and it basically gone, gone viral. Mm -hmm. You understand? This one here, yeah, you should, you, you just could go up on my page and see the kind of comment and tell about this painting. Mm -hmm. Everybody tell you like that painting just touched me. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I want. I, I tell she if, if she choose to, like try to do stone some type of foundation where at the end of the day, like we bring awareness to exactly what's going on mm -hmm. with what mom, whatever. If she choose to, I, I'm going up to Houston for Christmas to spend with my kids. I would love to do prints of these mm -hmm. and get them signed by me and her and have them available. Every mm -hmm. office in this country, okay? I don't do this for no publicity. I do this because I, this is what I do best. 
but because of our situation that we live in in society nowadays, I think every office, every home sure need one of the scene. How much did it go from? We do not really know. We have to. We have, we have to deal with that, right? At the yeah. end of the day, where well, a lot of people be like, "You're paying expensive. We really can't afford it." They keep Bradley. I'm not gonna sleep yet. I start painting yesterday evening, seven o'clock, and mm -hmm. I come straight here. That's the life of an artist. Right. That's my point. So what I'm saying, I dedicate my life to this. And if I could choose to change, if I could choose to paint something just for pretty up somebody wall, mm -hmm. that's that's the way to go. This but is your. This is your um, paint. Yeah, Anna Maria. At the end of the day, um, like I say, at the end of the day, my paintings are just these are paintings and the uh, uh, paintings. All your paintings, yeah. Junior Gang. You see the Black Virgin Mary. This is oh, stop right there. That's a piece that I did years ago with on the Palacio. That tough. Yeah, and I would treat. How much more to sell for? Um, <laughs> you don't have to reveal your, you don't have to reveal your uh, full, full account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The price is yeah, 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 the top. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's. Oh, where, where, where is your studio? You have a studio? I, um, it's, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that 80% mm. of my work now is commissioned. Like I tell you, I'm doing a piece for Miss World and yeah. Miss Universe. But they get Bradley this thing, uh, commitment. And if you know what you want out of life, my mom always said, she did not go and she said, listen, you set goals and you work and you do not lose track of what you want to accomplish. My thing right now, because a lot of my pieces there, they're controversial, but they're rare, they're, they're like yeah, life. I, I choose not to make one dollar right now. And God will provide, take it from me because I put God first in my life. Regardless, you know, I see me in a church every Sunday and whatever, but I could tell you. I know for a fact, and sometimes in my studio, and I talk to God, and I tell him, because I do a painting, and I sit back and watch it for city. Sometimes he answer back? Answer me every time, because every piece where I paint, and I tell him, give me the knowledge. When I used to live in New York, for my lunch break, I used to go in a museums, an art gallery, because I always love art. And I used to watch some painting, and I say, like, like I don't do anything for become this good. Mm -hmm. You the reach there, we have to have a show with Sanka by itself. Um, you got a lot of things where you need to say and to speak to other artists too because one of the problems we see missing in the matter of Shakira and all these grieving mothers is that you don't hear no poetry, you don't hear no yeah. songs. Mm -hmm. The rap artists, they should have already been on top of these things too. I mean, even a violent Jamaica where they are shooting down much more people than we are in our country. I know I want to cut your shot, but I want to something in there before I forget. The no, director right here called me already and tell me they want to mm -hmm. do a, a segment around artists and stuff. Mm -hmm. I call, I don't call the artists, then I call five of them, but we're sad about this. Then tell me, Alex, listen, we know how outspoken you are and you don't make it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to a show because you're born for we bridge. I said, well, what I did with my career and my life, I built my own bridge. Mm -hmm. You understand? The, the door then I went into, I kicked them in because the gate closed. How you are reaching at the door? You understand? Because when you look for one ladder, make her bring the substance way into it, whatever. Like you should simple. have it for the next show. Right. Yeah, no, to to, you a chance to talk to Shakira. Simple, you just have to have one goal <laughs> for achieve. And mm. like I said, no worry what people say, just go ahead and do what you know is right. Mm. And I think everything will fall in a place. So mm. my thing is putting out pieces like this will change lives. Shakira, everything will fall in place. You, you have that faith there. It has to be put in place. You have to have Oh, no, no, no. I pray and I know that everything will fall in, will place. Fall in place. It just might not be when I want it to. Mm -hmm. and, and when I would pray and ask for certain things to happen, it definitely would not be when I want it to because um, he doesn't go on when we want it. Mm -hmm. He goes on when his time timing is right. Is right. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely see things falling in place. Um, like I said, I still have questions. I still at times get angry, I still cry, I still scream out, I still miss my baby because my baby still was sleeping in my bed. He was my baby and, and I still miss him lying beside me with his little earbuds in and his tablet and he would be on YouTube and giggling at night and, and I could recall many times maybe after nine in his bedtime he would still be up and I would be beside him and I would say Tyler it's time for bed right now mommy. And when he gets tired, then he would take his little earbuds out. And um, most of the time, me and him had to argue about brushing his teeth. 
So I would tell him, get your butt in that bathroom. And he would look at me and say, right now, mommy. And he would go. When he's finished, he comes to bed and he hugs me up. Right here, he would place his little head, wrap his arm, arms here and his foot, and he would go to sleep. And I don't have that anymore. And it's very hard for me to deal with. It's very hard for me to digest. I keep his picture um, beside my bed. I keep his urine beside my bed because that is what comforts me. Mm -hmm. You know, he was everything to me. I, I sat, I cried, I cried because I just was trying to figure out what was going through these men head at that time. Like, what were you thinking? And, and I even started to, to write a, um, I just l lie in bed and, and I started to write and I just started to type and it was somewhat of a poem, but it was, it's something that I want them to hear. It says, did you know that my son was a potential leader? Did you know that he was an excellent reader? Did you know that all he wanted was to be a happy child and run around like a normal seven-year-old boy? Did you even know or think that he w what was his favorite toy? Did you know that he was broken because of the rootless animals living around in the streets? Did you know that it took me countless days, nights, and questions to mend his broken heart and comfort him that one day he will see his daddy very soon? I haven't finished it. Mm -hmm. I will finish it. But I want that to get to those persons that did that to let them know the pain that they have caused me. And even though I know that my son is happy because he's with his dad, it still does not take away the fact that we are killing each other and this society seems to make it okay. Like I could pull a trigger and I could kill you and, and that makes it okay. I go to jail, I spend three years, four years, five years. After that, a couple of years, you're in trial. Evidence goes missing. Witnesses oh, wow. goes missing. The, the, the culprits, liar, they, they come out. Off. Liars, like Mr. Liar, Bradley, yeah. gets them off. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's why one of the things that I sat and I brainstormed about, and I got a very good idea from some, um, somebody, and she asked me to please fight for our children protect our children not now but later on and and I sat and I thought about it and I said that down the line that's why I'm saying that I needed that legal that legal backative and and the um, advice that we could maybe um, have an additional legislation passed whereby a child murderer is dealt with differently mm -hmm. from somebody I, yes that I understand that we all have human rights but from the minute you could pull a trigger and kill a child you are no longer considered a human to me. You are considered an animal, a monster, mm -hmm. because you had no heart. Maybe, yes, you might regret it. Maybe you did not mean it, but the fact remains that you killed that child and you cannot bring that child back. And that is why I say that um, I would definitely need that, that legal advice on what I want to bring across. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe this will open a lot of mothers' eyes that are encouraging their children with this nonsense, because something whereby you are arrested you are charged and you are in prison if you don't have your family support to support you you will stay right there and your conscience will eat at you you will feel that you know what nobody is there for me and i believe that sometimes these people don't deserve people to be there for it for them and even though that part of me wants to be mean to them mm -hmm. i know they have a family that would like to be there to support them. But if you are killing our children, you are killing our potential leaders, you are killing people that could have made a difference to this society, then you don't deserve my respect. You don't deserve anybody's respect at, to me. You just don't. And that is why I say things will fall in place eventually. We have children out there um, that that are being neglected and I'm not just targeting mothers I'm targeting the fathers I'm targeting aunts grandmothers people that are influential because I might not listen to my mother but I may listen to my aunt or I may listen to my uncle if you know or you see that child is broken or that person is broken lend that helping hand to the mother lend a helping hand to the father try to show them some kind of love that somebody out there loves them because 
The people that are killing out there are very angry. These are angry people. These are people that something went significantly wrong in their homes. Mm -hmm. My child, I could definitely say if Tyler would have reached the age of 18, would have never picked up a gun and tried to hurt somebody because he knows the value of a life. Mm -hmm. He knows to love. And that is why I keep saying we need to learn to love. We need to learn to love. I had the vigil for my son the Friday and everybody told me oh you have my support but we could have count the amount of people that went out friday and right after that they had a celebration for um Garifuna settlement day and i'm sure the btl park was very packed it just goes to show that our priorities are not in place our children should be our priorities i personally wherever i go i used to take my baby because he's my priority. He did not ask me to come here. So I would take him everywhere because he deserved to live as much as, as much as I did. And that is why I'm appealing to parents. This is not something whereby it will come and go just like that. I will continuously try to send that word out that you need to love your children. Shakira, let's, let's, um, let's, let's conclude it at this particular point in time, simply in the interest of time. Uh, maybe we could have you and Alex either on Alex another half, show Alex or half 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 shows shows to continue this discussion. I mean, it's, it has been very moving for me as a parent, uh, listening to the way that you have now found the inner strength to deal with this tragedy. And for Alex to be able to express his, his thoughts and his vision of what is taking place in our present society through art. Uh, at this point in time, however, um, I would like to thank you guys for having joined us this morning. It's been our pleasure to have you. And again, I would want to encourage you to keep the fire burning. It raises awareness and hopefully it resounds among Belizeans on a whole. We would like to take a commercial break now. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with members of the YWCA as they celebrate the 60th Jubilee anniversary. Stay tuned.